All right. Um, I will talk about this uh, session. Uh, my name is Juyang from uh, Samsung Electronics. I'm happy to talk about this friend flash friendly fire system. This is a pretty new fire system which is uh, mainlined uh, a few months ago. So uh, I think this is the first presentation in the U United States, so Linux conference. <laughs> yeah. And um, I will talk about this uh, in this agenda. Uh, first, I will introduce some uh, flash memory stops, and I will talk about the FTL design, um, and also uh, F2FS design. And I will show you some results from the performance evaluation. OK, I will uh, start with the uh, introduction. Actually, you may uh, know that the rise of the SSD market. So this is very quickly growing market. And we have also the, uh, the smartphone market. Uh, they have uh, uh, lots of uh, memory cards and also embedded memory cards in, inside the uh, smartphone. So we expect a, a quick growth of the flash storage market. And so according to the, uh, then the flash memory uh, market growing, actually, there were uh, growing interest in, uh, interest in uh, NAND flash memory. Uh, but I think that the uh, FTL is a very uh, uh, hidden uh, technology, which is not uh, available to the public community. So it's not easy to uh, optimize the uh, host operating system or file system to uh, flash storage, like, uh, which has a flash translation layer inside it. So I will talk about uh, a basic background of the FTL device. Mostly that's about the FTL algorithm, like address mapping and garbage collection and wire labeling. So um, we had uh, uh, thought about the uh, conventional file system and FTL device, that how to optimize the uh, conventional file system. But um, actually, um, they can be optimized for to some degree, but uh, we thought the, the new design for FTL device from ground, from ground can be a, a better promising approach. So we have developed this, and yeah. And this is a, a little bit about the uh, storage access pattern in mobile phones. Actually, uh, the sequential write and random write is pretty uh, different in a FTL device. A random write is very uh, problematic in FTL device because it is uh, not good at uh, performance and also uh, not good for a life lifetime of the device. So we could have, a, uh, we saw uh, several papers on the uh, smartphone workloads. Uh, they, have, uh, they have shown that there are many uh, random writes also, there are many uh, app sync requests from the application side. So that's uh, that will be uh, th that's about um, that's related to the uh, SQLite framework uh, to some degree. But actually, applications also generate uh, many small file access. So so this is the problem for the FTL devices to handle. And uh, we, f firstly, we thought, we thought of the uh, conventional, the local structure of the file system approach to solve this problem. Actually, this, the file system is very uh, sequential oriented. So uh, in contrast to the uh, non-LFS approaches, the LFS is logging every data and metadata uh, in a sequential write fashion. So it's pretty. Um, beneficial for FTL devices because uh, the device doesn't care about the random write uh, problems. But uh, the uh, conventional file system, uh, conventional LFS is designed for a hard disk drive. So it's not pretty optimized for the uh, flash FTL devices. So we had uh, focused on the, uh, what is the gap between the hard disk drive and flash FTL devices. 
So this is a, a, a picture about the conventional LFS design structure. It has a super block up there and checkpoint pack. This is, yeah, this is a checkpoint. And uh, there are inode map, which is referencing the, uh, the inodes available in the system. And each inode reference the uh, pointer blocks or data blocks. So they have an indirect or uh, double indirect, some kind of a, uh, the pointer blocks. And also they have a segment summary or segment usage table, which is used for cleaning purpose. So those data set are all logged in a, a sequential log. This is a, a, a single log. And these structures are fixed at the, a, a specific location. So this is a mostly a sequential oriented. So we can use this kind of a structure in an FTL device and we can get benefit from the sequential write pattern from this file system. But uh, we have to think about the uh, two problem, you know, wandering tree problem and performance drop problem at a uh, high utilization uh, situation. So, so I will talk about the FTL block device structure. Uh, actually, uh, current EMMC, uh, which is embedded in a smartphone has this kind of a structure. This is a typical structure. It has a microprocessor uh, to run the software. Yeah, and it has a um, NAND flash controller and definitely they have a, a bunch of uh, flash memory chips. And it has a MMC interfaces to host uh, devices. So. And even the uh, EMMC, uh, latest EMMC have a dual core or more. They can have uh, more processing powers and they can run uh, FTL software inside it. And it has a working memory. Uh, um, so the role of the FTL is address mapping. So it is mapping a virtual block number to the physical block number, which is the, uh, the address for the NAND flash memories. And it has the garbage collection. Actually, garbage collection in FTL is the major reason of a bottleneck, performance bottleneck. So if you don't have any garbage collection procedure at runtime, the FTL performance is very good because it is just writing at the full speed of the sequential write. But when you have to do a garbage collection, they have to move data blocks into another block to reclaim a free, uh, free spaces. So that's the major source of the uh, performance latency in an FTL device. And it, ha it also handles um, wear leveling problem. So I will talk about a, a little bit about the FTL uh, mapping algorithms. Uh, this is not an exact uh, behavior of uh, uh, latest uh, algorithms, but it is general picture of that. Um, so uh, we have uh, uh, three categories of the address mapping methods. First one is a block mapping. This is pretty uh, poor algorithm in performance because they are moving uh, all of the data pages in an erase block when we have to update one page in, a, in the erase block. So uh, I think that this is not a uh, this is not this is not used in a high end uh, mobile cars or some other devices. And page mapping is a uh, mapping between a virtual page to the physical page. This is a, a pretty uh, fine-grained mapping ma uh, algorithm. So we can map uh, a NAND flash programming page size. Yeah, that's, that's so fine-grained. And also, we have a hybrid mapping. This is a uh, uh, proposed to address the page mapping algorithm's uh, memory complexity. So the mapping table uh, requirement for the page mapping is too, too high because uh, if we have uh, more than uh, 64 gigabytes NAND flash size, we need more than uh, 60 megabytes of memory to uh, just to store the uh, mapping table inside the working memory. So that requires a uh, using 
the external memory for the, uh, the inside uh, EMMC device. So the hybrid mapping can get some uh, high performance like uh, page mapping if there is a, a enough access locality like uh, spatial locality and temporal locality. And also uh, it, its, its mapping table requirement is very uh, small. So, so this is a very uh, promising architecture for the uh, mobile flash storages especially. So our, uh, there are three uh, address mapping uh, in the hybrid mapping category. So uh, block, os block association sec uh, sector translation and uh, fully associated and set associated. So this is an example of a set associated uh, hybrid mapping. So the, these uh, data blocks are grouped in, is, uh, is grouped. Uh, and each group has a number of, uh, a specific number of log blocks. So this is an example of a four data block group size and two log block assigned to each data block group. So uh, when we access the, when we update any page in a data block group, then the, the page is logged in a log block, which is uh, dedicated to this uh, block group. And so in this fashion, we can have a, a temporal locality and spatial locality in this data block group. So, and we can have another data block group and log blocks for for the for the for the for the data block group. So, and also we can have a multiple uh, data block groups, which is uh, concurrently logging at the same time. So, I will talk about that feature and how we exploit that feature in our AppTFS design. And I have to talk about the uh, merge operation uh, a little bit because the merge operation is critical in the uh, FTL design. So there are three kind of merge types. The full merge is uh, copying uh, valid pages from the log block and data block into uh, new free blocks. And they change the free block uh, into the data block types. So. This merge is required when we are running out of the log block for some other data block. So that means uh, there are random write to the, the whole volume size. Then uh, at, at some time, a data block group should be merged with the log block group so, so that we can have more log block for another data block groups. So, this is quite, th this is quite uh, happening very frequently in uh, EMMC devices. And the FTL performance is uh, depending on that kind of a merge type, actually. So if we have a full merge, then we take a very long time. And if, if there is a partial merge or switch merge possibility, we can reduce the merge time in uh, the FTL. So we can improve the performance. So, so our design is uh, actually driven by a policy to make a FTL to do a efficient merging operation. So the FTFS is designed to make a generate uh, workload which is very friendly to the FTL device to have uh, this kind of a switch merge be possible in most cases. So uh, our, uh, this graph is showing the, uh, the access pattern uh, and the throughput for the access pattern. So we changed the uh, record size in this x-axis. And this shows the uh, throughput. And, and the dashed graph is uh, the sequential write. And uh, the solid line is a random write performance. So in a sequential write, the performance is uh, increasing, and also random write is increasing as we increase the record size. So uh, when we determine the segment size for the FTFS, we have to consider the uh, enough uh, segment size to exploit the sequential, uh, sequ uh, the, to exploit the enough throughput of the NAND flash memory. 
And also, this uh, random write has a, a worse performance than the sequential write, so especially in a small re record sizes. So the random write should be uh, avoided uh, if you can. And this, this is showing the, uh, the feature of the concurrent writing scheme. Uh, we increase the number of a processor, which the, each processor is writing a sequential write pattern uh, to the device. So uh, from the device side, this can be considered a uh, multiple uh, sequential write streaming. So uh, we wanted to know how many single write or streams can be supported without any performance degradation in an aggregate throughput. So up until the six processes, there are uh, a very small uh, uh, gap between this uh, aggregate, aggregate throughput. But after uh, six number process, uh, we can see a uh, performance degradation uh, much. So we can think that the FTL can provide a up to uh, six multiple streams at the same time. So uh, this feature is exploited uh, in FTLFS to have some uh, uh, hot cold data separation in an efficient uh, manner. So this is an overview of the design. Uh, firstly, uh, the FTL friendly workload pattern, uh, we focused on the how to drive the FTL to, to do a switch merge type in most cases. And we also uh, focus on avoiding the metadata update propagation. So we actually the F-sync operation is very frequent in uh, mobile applications. So when we write a small data block, then uh, metadata should be written together to update the overall LFS structure. So in that case, the problem is a uh, F-sync latency is a user perceived latency. So to decrease that problem, uh, we tried to uh, introduce an indirection layer to avoid a, a wandering tree problem. And also, we focus on efficient cleaning mechanism uh, using a hot cold separation. So we use the uh, multiple concurrent streaming feature of the FTL device to, do, to achieve this. And we uh, use the adaptive write policy for high utilization. I will talk about this in a minute. And this is the on-disk structure. Uh, firstly, there are super blocks in the front, forefront and the checkpoint area. And segment information and segment summary are fixed in these uh, metadata spaces. And this is uh, different from the conventional LFS structure. And we have a node address table. This is a, uh, this is a new feature introduced in our file system. Um, this is introduced to avoid the wandering tree problem I will talk about in the later slides. And we uh, collocated all these kind of file system metadata in uh, front side. Uh, actually, we expect some kind of uh, acceleration from the FTL device for the uh, front, uh, front regions of the uh, flash memories. OK. So this is about the. Uh, uh, the wandering tree problem. So we introduced the NAT net uh, to, uh, to avoid the, uh, the metadata update propagation problem. So uh, let's assume that we have to write a new file data here. Then we have to write a direct node block to point to the, the new data block. And uh, in conventional LFS, the indirect node and file node should be updated together to reference this uh, new di direct node block. But we don't update this kind of uh, in the intermediate uh, node blocks. But instead, we just write this direct node and we record the, the LBA address of this node in an NAT table. So these uh, I node and indirect node refers to the uh, direct node using the uh, NAT uh, indirection scheme. So um, 
The indirect pointers are referencing the node ID, which is a, a virtual identity for the node block. It's not actually the uh, LBA address where the uh, node block is actually uh, placed. So this kind of a indirection scheme can avoid the uh, wandering tree problem. And this is a file indexing structure. Here is an inode, and uh, we have uh, uh, three depths in a that indirect pointer up to a uh, triple, and we can address up to uh, uh, nearly four terabytes for one file if you use a 4K byte block size. Yeah. And this is about uh, cleaning operation. So uh, we focus on this because the uh, actual problem which, which we had in a conventional LFS is uh, mostly about the cleaning overhead at high utilization. So we have to address that problem if we want to use the logo structure to update and file system. So actually, the, the good news from the FTL device is that it has a uh, concurrent writing stream support in, uh, compared to the hard disk drive. Actually, hard disk drive cannot support a multiple concurrent stream because the ARM should have uh, a many six between these uh, different positions. But FTL is very smart and not actually mechanical device inside. So the FTL device is handling the uh, multiple concurrent streams without performance degradation. So we exploit that feature to separate the hot cold uh, data. Uh, we have a policy like this to categorize the, the temp data temperature. Firstly, we, uh, we think that the node structure is a uh, more hotter than the data structure. So that means a uh, node is uh, more frequently ex updated than data set. And we also have uh, three more classes for node and data set. So for example, we consider a, this kind of uh, uh, appended data of a regular file is to be called. And we also think that the, uh, the the copied data by cleaning procedure is uh, is called data, and multimedia files uh, can be called because they are mostly written once and read many many times. So this kind of a uh, policy is applied at the data writing time. So uh, we can do it at at uh, file creation time or data update time. So, and we also have some. Uh, hot code separation, which is done in a cleaning time. So that's done in a background. So I'll talk about it later. Yeah. So actually, we have some uh, cost benefit policy to uh, select a cold victim segment when we have to do a background cleaning. So the background cleaning is uh, considering the segment ages. So. The segment age is determined that such that a frequently, up, frequently updated segment is very young, and uh, a less updated segment is considered a uh, old uh, segment. So uh, the young segment is uh, considered a heart, and we uh, try to select a uh, old segment to move cold data at the same uh, uh, segment. So, so that we can have a more uh, cleaning efficiency after, afterwards. So uh, we have uh, an um, experiment to, uh, to show the how it works. Then uh, I think that's uh, the demonstrating the effect of the cost benefit is uh, quite complicated because uh, we need a more uh, practical user access pattern to the files and the overall uh, data set. But it's, it's quite complicated to do this kind of a uh, background cleaning uh, test in a practical daily usage. So we had uh, some, some kind of a synthetic experiment to show that. And also, um, at the high utilization, uh, we have some problem uh, 
if we, if, if we have no clean segment. Actually, uh, we have to choose uh, uh, whether we have to do cleaning or not. So uh, good news is uh, we, can, we can just uh, write data to the FTL devices without cleaning. So this, the, the, the writing policy is, is uh, named the threaded logging. This is not a, a new approach. This is uh, used in a conventional LFS, but that's uh, used in a hard disk drive. But uh, we saw a, a very interesting uh, behavior of the FTL device in here because um, FTL device has a very uh, local uh, access uh, optimization. So if we have some small range random write pattern, then that can be better than a large range random write pattern. So actually our thread logging is uh, making some uh, random write pattern, but that's very uh, you know, narrow uh, random ranges. So it's better, uh, better than other uh, update in place file systems data patterns. OK, so uh, I will show you some performance data. Uh, we have measured this kind of data set uh, using a ARM Cortex-A9 processor and one gigabyte memory. And we used a 64 gigabyte eMMC. And actually, this is not running the Android, uh, Android platform. Uh, we wanted to focus on the actual file system behavior uh, without any uh, uh, considering consideration of the application side. So uh, we run a micro benchmark, IOZone, and we can see the, uh, the nearly equal performance in a sequential write and sequential read and random, uh, random read cases. But uh, as expected, the random write performance is um, uh, much better than the EXT4 case because we are translating the overall the random write test uh, random random write workflow to the sequential write pattern so you can see that um, the random write bandwidth is uh, much similar to the sequential write bandwidth and we also measure the uh, directory performance and this is a uh, number of direct, number of files in a directory as we increase the the directory size uh, we can see a uh, uh, some performance degradation, but the FTFS performance is uh, uh, better than the ext4 cases in a very large directory test cases. And also, the Boni++ shows the similar pattern in a directory operation performance. And this is about the uh, cleaning victim selection policy. Uh, we wanted to sh uh, sh see uh, how the cost-benefit policy is uh, better than the greedy policy. So the greedy policy is selecting a, a victim based on the how many uh, data blocks are invalidated in the uh, victim segment. And the cost-benefit considers the uh, hot code uh, uh, feature of the, the victim segment. So we, uh, you can see uh, this is the purple line. Uh, for the cost of benefit moved blocks in a cleaning procedure. So you can see the, the drop of the moved block. So the cleaning overhead is being uh, degrade, uh, uh, reduced after we uh, iterate the test cases. And the performance is uh, increased uh, accordingly because we have reduced the number of I.O. for the cleaning operation. And also, uh, for the comparison, uh, we do a greedy test. So the, in the greedy case, uh, the number of moved blocks are uh, still the, uh, the same in most iterations. So the performance is not uh, improved, even though we do uh, cleaning operations. So uh, we can see the cost benefit policy can improve the, uh, the overall performance. Uh, after some uh, garbage collection is going on. And this is about the uh, adaptive write policy. So 
Uh, you can see that the performance drop uh, after some time of a random write, pa uh, random write test. So we just run and uh, random write sustained rate uh, performance is measured in here. So the blue line uh, corresponds to the 32% uh, utilization. And we, we started from the 32% utilization volume. And the random write is applied to the volume. Uh, so we measure this uh, throughput. And actually, in this peak uh, plateau, uh, the, the FTFS has a peak performance because we have a clean segment. So we can write in sequential pattern. But if we don't have a more clean segment, we have to do switch to the thread logging policy. But in this case, uh, the performance in the thread logging policy is still better than the ext4 case. So that shows the, um, the benefit of a local random write pattern of FTFS. So the red line uh, corresponds to 65% uh, utilization test case. And even we tested the 97% utilization test cases. So all, for all the utilization cases, uh, FTFS performs better than ext4, like this. So, and without using the thread logging, so, uh, we have to do cleaning uh, at, to reclaim a, cl a clean segment. So if we do that, the performance is uh, much worse than the ext4, like this. So this is not a good approach. Uh, if we have a, a uh, if we have if we have no uh, clean segment. Okay, uh, this is about the life ex uh, lifetime enhancement uh, feature of the FTFS. So we tested a sequential write and random write test case, and we mixed the workload together, and we measured the uh, wear well acceleration index. That's that index is uh, defined to be a uh, total erase size per total written data. So that should be uh, uh, the lower number is better uh, in lifetime. So you can see uh, FTFS is, has a very low Y value. Uh, in comparison, the random write case, the ex 4 has more than 10 Y value. So, uh, this is actually the synthetic workload, but in uh, in practical case, so the lifetime uh, can be uh, less than this kind of value. But still, uh, we think that the FTFS has a less than two Y value, and this is uh, pretty uh, good for the lifetime enhancement for the flash storages. And we measure the uh, application performance actually. Uh, in this case, this is not a uh, IO specific performance test case. So the overall benefit would not be so high uh, uh, in compared to the uh, micro benchmark. But we can see still the 20% uh, improvement in uh, contact sync time. So this is a very uh, right, uh, right oriented uh, application. And Application install, installation is uh, mostly generating the sequential write pattern. So in that case, the ext4 and ftfs has a similar performance. And also, uh, in RL bench, this is a, a database uh, benchmarking. So in that case, we have a 17% improvement. And this is a multitasking scenario test, so we run IOZone test with the uh, background application installation procedure. So in sequential write bandwidth, uh, we had 11% uh, uh, improvement. And in the read case, we have 2% improvement. So this kind of uh, performance improvement is also uh, observed in the aged uh, volume uh, situation. So we have uh, applied some kind of uh, application workload to the to make an aged situation in a FTFS volume. So that uh, so that means um, we have some kind of a cleaning operation in the background. 
So we measure that performance, and we still see uh, the uh, similar performance improvement. Yeah. So uh, I talked about the uh, design of the FFS. So this uh, we are working on the, uh, the bug fixing or doing more performance enhancement or yeah, some kind of enhancement is working on. So, um, yeah. So, we have uh, included in a 3.8 uh, mainline kernel. So, you can uh, enjoy that the, with an FTL device like a EMMC device or SD cards or even the SSD drive. So, I think that there should be more performance testing and analysis work on a uh, various devices in a, yeah. Okay. <laughs>